we do know that God is pleased when you, uh, you and I cultivate a Thanksgiving lifestyle. Well, what is the alternate of Thanksgiving lifestyle? It's being grumpy, complaining, criticizing, and all, and all those negative things. When you're at that point, it, it ain't, you're not a happy camper, I would say. But I believe that all of us were God-ordained, in a sense, to honor God, to give Him praise. And so if you're looking at Psalm chapter number 18, I want to read uh, verse uh, 6, and then I'm going to... Uh, pray and uh, get into the message tonight. Uh, gratitude for the goodness of God is the title of the message. Uh, reasons, five reasons why believers can be or should be uh, thankful or give thanks from Psalm chapter number 18. And uh, let's begin in verse 6. In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto God. And he heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Now, I'm going to skip a lot. I'm going to try to share some of it. But at the end of this psalm, the Lord gives reasons as to why we should be thankful. And then because of the things he mentions, the psalmist mentions in this particular chapter, notice verse 49. He says, therefore, because of all these things, as We'll touch on some of them tonight because of our time. Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy God. Let's pray. Lord, we want to, first of all, acknowledge that without you, we cannot do anything. Thank you for giving us another day. And Lord, we do pray in the next few moments you will use the truth of your word to help us, to encourage us, and Lord, to remind us of this great uh, truth found in the word of God. Lord, we pray the Holy Spirit now would comfort, and Lord, that you would uh, be with those that are traveling, those that are away from us. Pray that you give everyone a safe holiday, and we'll give you thanks for that as well. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preface this by saying that when you read the Bible, and the Bible is replete and filled with passages to remind us to be thankful, to give thanks. If you're wondering what you should you do as a Christian, one of the New Testament teachings reminds us that we are to give thanks always for all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's always a good place to start out. Uh, if you don't know what to, to give thanks for, to God for, Go back to that moment of your conversion. Go back, back to that time that your life was changed and that will be a good place to start. When I think about the subject of thanksgiving and praise and gratitude, when I look at the Bible, what happened to the human race? What took, what took place in the book of Genesis and so forth? We find that one of God's created beings, Satan, Lucifer, the angelic host, wanted to take God's position, wanted to be like God and remove God off of his throne. And he came down to earth and was cast out of heaven, and his influence upon the human race has impacted us as well. Think about it. If Satan would have adored and honored and been thankful about his relationship to God Almighty, there would have been no fall at all. But his fall and his decision has impacted us. When you really think about why you might find yourself being ungrateful, it may be related to this one thing, that you're not satisfied about God in your life. If God is not enough, what is enough? Think about it. If God can't satisfy you with his spirit, with his presence, then you know what you're going to do? You're going to look elsewhere. And you're not going to live a discontented life. And that's a picture and type of someone following the lifestyle of Satan. And God has another way of being for us to live. A second thing is that is our failure to recognize the goodness of God. You know, if you just think long enough, you can always come up with something to magnify and to praise the Lord for. Uh, go to the VA center. Go to the 
hospital, go to California where the fires were. Man, a lot of people, tent city now, living in tents. Uh, go to the city of Albuquerque. I'm sure I don't need to remind you. We got people living in the streets all the time. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you have friends and relatives. Uh, you know, a week doesn't pass by. We're reminded of some calamity. And when you think about what God has allowed you, you have a roof over your head. Uh, you have shelter for the night tonight. That's something to not take for granted. It's a lot to to give thanks for God. And, and you never know how much something means to you until it's taken away, whether it be a car, a parent, um, uh, food. And in my case, this past uh, three and a half weeks, water. And I can only imagine when some of the people that we've heard of recently that lost their entire home and lives, it, it, it can be overwhelming. So, I want to start off by saying that sometimes giving thanks can be a challenge, but I'm also reminded that we are taught in Scripture to do so. So let me get these out to you, and I'm not going to be able to go through all of them in detail. There's five reasons I'm going to bring out. I'm going to give to you them in bullet form. Number one, because God hears and answers my prayer. God hears and answers my prayer. This is one of the things that I can give thanks to God for. God is a Lord that knows what's going on in my life. Do you believe he knows what's going on in your life? Every minute, every struggle. The Bible says he sees my thoughts from afar off. Uh, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my Redeemer. The Lord knows what's in my heart. I might be uh, dressed uh, in a certain way, but God looks upon the heart and he knows what's taking place inside of me. The Bible is replete with verses that remind us the Lord hears and answers prayer. For example, this passage in Psalm 34, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Colossians 4, 2, Continue in prayer, watch in the same with thanksgiving. Did you know there's a correlation between God answering your prayer and gratitude? Did you know that? God wants to show you and I His great power. The Bible reminds us, confess your faults one to another, uh, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Maybe you haven't seen anything going on in your Christian life. Well, I want to challenge you based on this particular passage. Take prayer to heart. Bombard the throne of grace. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Pray without ceasing. Give it your all. Make sure your relationship with God between you is clean and upright. And watch God go to work. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And at the end of the day, and I really want to challenge our church family, and Lord willing, uh, I'd like to do so in the upcoming year. We're going to start journaling together, not doing a diary, but journaling as a church family. I'm going to try to get journals for everyone that will be willing to take this family and just jot down what God is doing. It's so easy to forget what God did for us yesterday and last week and last year and 10 years ago. But when you journal and you you look and maybe you write notes in your Bible, you can find it in your heart to give thanks because God hears and answers prayer. Secondly, not only God hears and answers prayer, but God delivers me. Notice in verse number 17, it says, And he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. As we've been studying the book of Psalms, the psalmist David had his share of enemies, mainly King Saul and his own son, who rose up against him. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, Here we just read it. He delivered me from my strong enemies or from my 
enemies. Psalm 34, verse 17, he delivered them out of all their troubles. Proverbs 11, verse 4, the rich, richest prophet not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. What is that passage, that last passage referring to? Don't matter how much wealth or money, I think all of us would like a little bit more. We need to be content with such, with what we have and be wise stewards of what we do have. But the truth of the matter is money can't deliver you from hell. That's what that last verse is reminding in us. Only Jesus Christ can and, and the saving power that he offers us through his death, burial, and resurrection. We looked through the Psalms and we know that God delivered the psalmist from great harm and from his enemies. Is there anything too hard for the Lord to do? Can God take on anybody? Yes, he can. Uh, we might try to take things into our own hands. The Bible says, vengeance is mine and I will repay, say the Lord. Uh, given the chance, David uh, had the chance to kill his enemy, Saul, and he didn't. When the children of Israel were facing the giant Goliath and being intimidated by such a great giant, God gave victory to the, against the Philistine. You know, the battle is still the Lord's. And God still is in the business of delivering his people in all sorts of ways. Thirdly, he delights in me. Look at verse number 19. This is a wonderful reminder about God and his relationship to you. He brought me forth so off into a large place. He delivered me because he delighteth in me. In other words, the idea... Delighting here also carries the idea of favor or love. Uh, recently, when we were in the Northeast, I saw my little grandson, Santiago, and he was a little delight to me to carry that little baby. And can I tell you that if you're one of God's children, you can experience his awesome love. God delights in you. God loves me. Uh, the Bible reminds us, and it's replete with many uh, passages. For example, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. And you might be thinking, well, if that, if that is true, how is it Then I feel, still I feel unloved? The Bible ha has a lot to say about the love of God. Now, friend, I'm here to tell you, feelings sometimes can play tricks on you, but the truth of Scripture and, and telling us about the love of God rings uh, a, a reminder in my mind and heart that God doesn't just speak about loving me. He proved His love, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But God is about loving you. You say, even when I mess up, even when I mess up. As a matter of fact, as many as the uh, Lord loves, He rebukes and chastens. Uh, if you're one of God's children and you live in dis play, plain disobedient behavior, no matter what it might be, who knows when that time of correcting and chastening comes. But it's proof that God cares about you and God still wants to delight in you. And so the way to get that uh, correction out of your life is uh, obey the Lord. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. A Christian can say, I love God, but are you obeying the commands of God? That's a different story. Thir fourthly, he strengthens me. Look at verse 32. Sometimes God doesn't take away the trials. Sometimes God allows through to go through the valley. Sometimes God enables us to face what we might think is difficult and dark and terrible be by giving us grace. The Bible says, it is God that girded me with strength and make it my way perfect. One of my favorite passages in, in the New Testament is Philippians 4.13. One of those, you got to commit to memory. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Trials are not in, friend, in vain, friend. But I do know that God strengthens us through the counsel of others. God strengthens us through His Word. God strengthens us through His Holy Spirit. And God sometimes allows us to face things without taking away the problems. But He will go with us for He has promised He will never leave us nor forsake us. And then lastly, 
Why should I give thanks? Because he is my salvation. And for his salvation, look at verse number 46. The psalmist says, The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. What Jesus Christ represents for the Christian is that Christ took the punishment for sin, shed his blood to pay for sin, and died on that cross, was buried and rose on the third day. And because he has done that for me, he offers to us so great a salvation. My sins are forgiven. I'm heaven bound. I have communion and fellowship with God. And when I think about some of the things that the psalmist brings up, he mentions here in verse 49, Therefore, because of these things, what things? He hears my prayers. He delivers me. Uh, He delights in me. He loves me. He strengthens me. And because he has saved me, therefore, because of these things, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. God is good. Amen.